Bum 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 bum. Tomatoes. Hello, welcome to video four. What is set relative location? We'll go ahead and jump right into this video, and right now nothing is set up to work. Well, why do I say that? Well, because I have nothing plugged in, and I want to show you the node itself first. The set relative location node is pretty simple. It's going to target a scene component. Remember, a scene component is going to be a component in a blueprint. And it's going to have a scene component somewhere in its hierarchy. Basically, it's going to be something that has a transform attached to it. So if you have a transform attached to it, it's going to go ahead and accept it in as a relative location input for the target. So I could plug in the drawer, the cabinet. I could technically plug in the root itself because if you look at the... Oops the root itself, our root is a scene component. Now the relative version of this basically means according to our parent, where are we? And what do we want to do relative to our parent? So if our parent's at zero and we want to be at 10, well, then we're going to set ourselves to 10. But if parent is at 100 and we want to set ourselves 10 away from the parent, now we're going to be 110. But you don't have to worry about the math. You just say, hey, relative to my parent, I want to be this distance away from it. Let's plug this back in. We're taking a location. A location's a vector, but of course we can split it. And I'll plug this into our X. Now, if you notice, I have my location Z set to 30, and I'll explain why in a second. But when we run this, we should have our drawer going in and then coming back out. I have our timeline set to loop so we can see it moving. And I wanted to do this so that way we can actually look at it. So here's our file cabinet and let's move this down. We'll look at the file cabinet. Here's the location of the file cabinet in the world. Here's the location of the drawer in the world relative to the parent as we're moving it. And you notice it's moving in and out. So if we were to take this file cabinet and let's say we move the file cabinet. Uh, let's see, we need to select the file cabinet's root. And let's move the file cabinet off to the side by oh, negative 100 this time. The file cabinet moves, and while the file cabinet moves, our drawer is still moving accordingly. Because it's moving relative to the parent, it's going to move in and out in the correct position and the correct location every time, no matter where our parent's at, or even no matter where our parent's rotated at, as you can see here. And that's the power of the relative settings it will set itself and it doesn't care about the parent. So if we were to look at the node itself, when we look at our items inside of our viewport, we have our drawer and our drawer is set at this location. We have our drawer, which is set at this location, 90, 0, and 30. This is why my settings are like they are. It has its own relative location to the cabinet right now. It starts off at 90, 0, and 30. So when I am adjusting it, I need to make sure I'm starting at 90, 0 for my Y, and 30 for my Z. And then I'm adjusting my X, which is my in and out motion, and lurping between 90 and 10. But I need to make sure I still adjust my Z relative to its parent. I'm setting. I'm not adding. I'm not subtracting. I'm setting relative to the parent every time this timeline runs. It'll be at 90, it'll be at 89, 87, but I need to make sure these are still 0 and 30. So that's something to keep in mind. You can't just say, oh, I just want to change the X, I'm going to leave the rest of these alone. No, it's a setter node. You need to make sure they're set properly. Sweeping and teleporting follow the same mechanics as all other setter nodes. If you have sweep turned on and we attempt to do something, collision is going to come into effect. So if, for example, my character was here, you can see, well, it's attempting to move it, but because I've told it it has to obey sweeping, it's colliding with my character and not moving. Now, the timeline's still running. So, for example, if I was to move out a little bit, you notice the timeline's going to continue to run. It's just going to basically not do anything when it hits the part where I'm in the way. It's going to continue past me, come back, go back in, continue past me, come back, go back in, but the portions where it's trying to actually extend itself fully, those are failing. And 
because of sweeping, they're failing because we have a blocking hit, and it will not happen. Basically, this move will not happen. Teleport? Well, let's turn off sweep and move my character so we can see. And this is what happens when it's off. And you'll see it moves through my character. It's actually going through because we're not stopping it due to the sweep. Teleport only works with physics collisions. And if you have something going on in terms of dramatic physics states, maybe you have hair or you have an octopus with legs, and you do a giant movement, we're moving from one end of the world to the other, your physics is going to go, that was a very large movement. Let's update this and make our tentacle swing wildly and just drive the player crazy. No, if you're teleporting, moving a great distance, check teleport. It'll disable the movement physics while it's moving and then re-enable it when it stops. Our output is going to be a hit result if we have sweeping turned on and it's our normal results for a hit. And that's it. That's going to wrap up our set relative location node. Its target is a scene component. Its input is going to be a vector. You can, of course, split it if needed. And you can sweep for collisions and teleport if you want things not to react crazy to physics. 